I wanted to show you how you could create a sitemap using Figma. Once you sign up for Figma, you'll be able to log in and you'll be able to start working with the application and making projects. Now, all of your Figma material is going to exist on the web. This is a great way that you can share projects with others and be able to work on projects from any machine. You can either work in Figma through the browser or you can actually download the Figma application to your computer. Both versions of Figma are going to work and look very similarly. This is the web-based version of Figma. Let me just show you what the application-based version of Figma looks like. As you can see, there really isn't that much difference. I'm going to be using the application version to demo making a sitemap. One of the easiest ways to create a sitemap is to use the new FigJam file. This is a portion of Figma that is used for whiteboarding and diagramming. It works great for creating sitemaps. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign here, and it's going to dump me into the new Jamboard window. Now you can choose from pre-templated Jamboards, but we're just going to close this and start ours from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the name of this to my sitemap, and then I'll put V1.0 so we know that this is version one. The tools you use in the Jamboard portion of Figma are fairly simple. They will exist down at the bottom. You will have the ability to draw, create basic sorts of shapes, create sticky notes, text, connectors, and then we have stamps and templates available. We're going to primarily be working with the shapes, text, and connectors. So I'm going to select the square from the shape menu down here. At this point, I'm able to click on the square and then click up above, which is going to allow me to add a note. This will be the home page for my site map. I'm going to resize the square into more of a rectangular type of fashion, so it's not taking up quite as much space. You can do things like modify the color of the rectangle, add strokes and control the type of stroke line, convert to a different type of shape, control your text, include links, make bullets, adjust your text alignment, and the font size. I like to make sure that my text is set to center aligned. That way when I write things, everything stays nicely aligned. Now what you're going to do is you're going to need to consider all of the different areas of your website. You may have already done this in a text editing application. So you can see here, I have a bulleted list and these are all my planned pages for my website. I'm going to take this list and I'm going to turn it into more of a visual representation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my home button. I'll hold down my option or alt key to drag out a copy. And then I'm going to create the names of my top tier buttons. I'll just alt or option drag to create copies. And then I will simply change the text as I go about creating the various parts of my site map. Once I have the top tier elements created, I'll go ahead and I'll start to make duplicates of these so that I can make the second tier elements. The way in which you create your elements, whether they're vertically or horizontally lined, really depends on personal preference and how much space you have available to create the various areas. You can always move these things around once you create them. They're easy enough to adjust and you can grab multiple items by simply dragging and tagging all of them and then repositioning them to another part of the artboard. I'm going to move these over a little bit farther because what I need to do is create a sub button for my tour area. Now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to make some additional elements off of the menu area. These will be my tertiary navigation. So this is going to be three levels deep from the main element. Now that you have all of the pages created, we'll go ahead and we'll link them together. We'll use this connector to do so. You have the ability to use a straight line connector or this little curved connector. In order to use the connector, you'll hover over one of the sitemap elements and you'll click on one of these circles and drag it to the new page. In order to create multiple links, hold down your X key. The X key is the shortcut to get to the curved connector. 
So you can just keep selecting the element, clicking X and accessing the connector. In this way, you can very quickly make the links to all of your subpages. You'll want to reinitiate the page and click on the connector before you drag out. The reason why is because otherwise you're going to end up with lines that may go in different directions. Here I'm going to switch to a straight line connector. Then I'm going to do similar things on all of these other pages. Once again, I want to use my straight line connector. So I will select this one. I can force it to use that by coming down here below and clicking straight line. Now when I click on any of my pages, I will have access to that straight line connector. If you want to switch back to the curved line connector, click X or access the tool from the toolbar down below. Once again, I'm going to go back to straight line and then from the various menus, I'll use straight lines. The shortcut key to access the straight line is L. Now I'll click X again to go to my curved line connector and I'll do that one more time to link the press from our farms. I'm going to go ahead and just grab my pages and drag them down a little bit just so I have a little bit more real estate and more room to stay organized. This will also help show the hierarchy of the various pages. In addition to the pages going in this order, I'm going to click on my restaurant page and I'm going to use the curved connector and have it link over here to the reservation page. If you don't like the way that the line is going, you can grab these little blue hover areas and you can reconstruct how the line is going to meet up with any given page. This can be helpful if you have a lot of pages and you need the line to be adjusted in some manner. I'm also going to go ahead and make a link from my events page over here to the reservation page as well. That looks pretty good. Now you can see I have a clearly diagrammed out site map. It shows the hierarchy of all of the elements. If you find that you want elements to have different colors, all you have to do is select those items and then you can change the color to a different shade using the fill tool over here. It can be helpful to color coordinate pages so that you're not confused as to where those elements are coming from. Figma is a really helpful tool in regards to creating these sitemaps. They can be a great way to visually represent the hierarchy of your website. This can be shared with other people. If you want to share this with someone else, in order to export it using Figma, you'll need to put this into a regular page. So I'm going to select my entire site map. I will copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my home setting of Figma. Now I'm going to create a new design file. Once I'm in the design file environment, I'll go ahead and I'll paste to paste in my site map. Now in order to export, I'm going to need to create a frame. So I'm going to use the frame tool and I'm just going to draw a frame around all of the elements of my site map. I want to make sure that all of the elements are contained within the frame. If you need to adjust the frame, you can grab the frame and adjust how large the frame is. You can also select all of the items on the frame and you can adjust their position within the frame as well. Once you're happy with the layout of your frame and you're ready to share it, you can click the share button. In this way, you can use an email and actually share the link with someone else. If you use this method, you can simply send an email and have anyone with the link be able to view the file. Sometimes we may want to create the file and export it out as a graphical element. To do that, we'll select the frame. I'm going to come to the file menu and I'm going to choose export frames to PDF. When I do this, I'll be able to create a site map file as a PDF. This will allow me to share this with anyone else. If I go ahead and save this, and once it has been saved, I can open it up in my PDF viewer and you can see I have a PDF of the file. At this point, I could email this to someone or use it within a presentation. Needless to say, Figma is a great way in which you can very easily create a site map. Once you've created the site map element, you can always go ahead and 
access the sitemap for further editing or deciding to share it with someone else. Anything that you create within Figma will be saved under the home section of your Figma project. So here is my sitemap. I can double click and go in here and edit this at any point. I hope that you found this to be a useful way to create sitemaps using Figma.